Hi, welcome to First Chapter Friday. My name is Lucy, and the book that I am going to be reading, the first chapter of today, is called The Next Great Jane, and this is by K.L. Going. The Next Great Jane begins with a girl named Jane. She is an aspiring writer and a huge Jane Austen fan, and she lives in a small town in Maine, where the most momentous thing that's happened in her life is about to occur, which is this very famous author named J.E. Fairfax is coming to this small town to do a talk at the library there. This is also the night of a very big hurricane headed their way. That, combined with some other factors, make that night not pan out the way that Jane expected. And that is where the story starts. Jane lives with her father, who is an oceanographer. Her mother left for Hollywood some years ago. This book has her mother returning, and it also has the children of this author, J.E. Fairfax, one of whom, her son named Devin, Jane finds particularly annoying the onset. So, of course, this book being called The Next Great Jane and having a protagonist who loves Jane Austen in some ways has a very Jane Austen-like plot, which means that it has some romantic comedy that's pretty lively, that's pretty funny. It also has some discussions of natural science and climate change because of Jane's father's work. There's also some talk about what it takes to become a successful author, as well as just becoming something that feels right to you, something that is true to yourself. So that's a general outline. I don't want to give you too much detail because it's a very exciting book to read. I'm going to go ahead and read chapter one. Chapter one, nothing important ever happened in Wicked Harbor, Maine. So it figured that the two biggest things to hit the town in a decade would occur on the exact same night. One of them even threatened to cancel out the other. But I was not about to let a hurricane keep me from meeting a best-selling author. Little did I know the hurricane would bring more trouble than I bargained for, including the most annoying boy I'd ever met, a night of disaster, and worst of all, my mother fresh from Hollywood. Emmett? Jane? Anyone home? The voice drifting through the front door belonged to the coolest person I knew. Anna Taylor was my babysitter, our housekeeper, car fixer-upper, weekly planner, and all-around most important person ever. Without Anna, Dad and I would be lost. In here, me and Dad called out at the exact same time. For dad, in here meant he had his head stuck in the refrigerator, making sure he wasn't missing any stray jars of seawater. He's an ocean scientist, and there's only one way to describe how he feels about his plankton samples. True love. For me, in here meant I was in my writing nook. Our old-fashioned kitchen has a huge cupboard set into the wall that used to have shelves until Anna knocked the top ones out with a sledgehammer. As long as I bring a flashlight, it's the best place to create like I'm in a hobbit hole or a secret compartment. On a side, should have known. Either of you planning on emerging anytime soon? I swung open the cupboard door and jumped down. Please, please tell me that the library event hasn't been canceled. Hello to you too, Jane. Anna tousled my hair. She's known me since I was in kindergarten, so she's allowed. It's still on. They really don't want to call it off. In the whole history of the town, there had never been an event of this magnitude, and if we canceled now, J.E. Fairfax might never come back. Anna frowned. Emmett? Dad tried to emerge from the refrigerator, bumping his head, then smacked his hand when he went to touch the bumped spot. Dad is tall, built like a lumberjack, with broad shoulders, and he frequently collides with the furniture in our old house. Ooh, ow, oh, ouch, sorry. Hello, Anna. He scrunched up his nose and chuckled as if he knew exactly how nerdy he was. You're staying home tonight, right? Anna pressed. Weather report says the brunt of the storm won't hit until 10, but the wind's picking up already. Dad shook his head. Gotta get these samples to the lab in case our power goes out. I'll probably sleep there. Need to make sure nothing gets damaged. Dad regularly gathered samples on his boat and then carted them home until he could return to the lab. It was a standing rule that no one ever ate or drank anything from our fridge that wasn't clearly labeled. Really? Shouldn't you stay here with Jane? My father scratched his chin as if that idea hadn't occurred to him. Right. Yes. Maybe I should come back. It's just... 
He gave Anna the pleading face he reserved for convincing her to work extra hours. These samples are invaluable resources of the oceanography community around the globe. If anything happened at the lab, we'd have lost them. He seemed to think we should be horrified at the idea. Anna put her hands on both hips. Oh no, Emmett Brannon, those big brown eyes of yours aren't going to sway me this time. The fact is, you wouldn't have to worry about these samples if you'd learned to work the generator, like I told you. Dad looked shamefaced. The thing about generators is that they aren't as simple as most people think. You don't just throw a switch when your power goes out. You've got to maintain a generator, turn it on periodically, and make sure all of the spark plugs and such are working. I'd heard Anna remind Dad about it a hundred times. But no matter what, when it came time to flick that switch, our generator was never in working condition. Anna was a petite, blonde spitfire. She could chop a cord of wood, at work half the men in the Wicked Harbor Volunteer Fire Department, and fix your flatbed truck in her spare time. The only thing Dad could do with your flatbed truck was remember where he parked it, if you were lucky. Anna, he said, these are red tide samples from off Mohegan Island. She just narrowed her eyes. Dad shuffled his feet. Well, Jane could come with me and we could sleep at the lab. No way, I shook my head. I am not missing J.E. Fairfax's talk. You know I've been waiting for this forever. Dad raised one eyebrow in my directions. Forever? Huh? You're only 12. Besides, she doesn't even write for kids. She writes trashy romance novels. I'm pretty sure all of her advice will be aimed at adults. Her novels are not trashy, Dad. I argue the New York Times called them sweeping romantic sagas full of high drama. The library had used that quote on their posters, and I'd memorized it because it sounded incredible. Every one of her books is a bestseller, and three of them have been made into movies. Anna grinned dreamily. I adore her movies. There are always two people who are meant for each other, but they can't see the truth until fate forces them together. Remember that one with the guy in the military who moved away from his childhood sweetheart? Then years later, they found each other again. Oh, I loved that one, Anna clapped excitedly. Dad cleared his throat, giving us his best bewildered expression. Could we get back to the point? Anna, could you possibly? Uh-uh, Anna crossed her arms over her chest. I need to be at my apartment to look in on Mrs. Wallace next door. She practically had a conniption when I left to get Jane. She's so worked up about this storm, she'll probably have a stroke. We could do rock, paper, scissors, Dad suggested. Anna threw her hands up. No, we couldn't. You need to stay home with your daughter, period. There was a long moment of silence where none of us said a word, but finally my father relented. Okay, you're right. I'll pick Jane up at the library after these samples are stored properly, and I'll ask Marty to check in on the lab later tonight. Anna beamed. Thank you, I knew you'd make the right choice. She practically glowed. Dad ran a hand through his sandy blonde hair, making it stick out in weird directions. Well, I'd better get moving if I'm going to be back in time. Thanks for dropping Jane off at the author thing. He picked up one of the coolers, then paused. You know you're amazing, right? Dad had been telling Anna that for years. She blushed and made the same scoffing noise she usually made. As Dad walked past, he nudged me in the ribs. Have fun. Remember this night when you're supporting me in my old age with the fortune you make on your writing. I rolled my eyes. Your jokes are terrible. Dad grinned, and I shoved him the rest of the way out the door. He loaded the coolers in the back of the truck, then climbed into the cab and leaned out the open window. Once we get home, we can watch movies until the lights go out. We've got popcorn and dill seasoning, right, Sprite? Those were the only two grocery items Dad never forgot to stock up on. Yep, I waved as he backed out. Sounded perfect. A chance to learn the tricks of the writing trade from a famous author, followed by a whole evening hanging out with my father during a hurricane? What more could a girl ask for? Too bad that's not even close to how the evening turned out. That's the end of chapter one. That last sentence there lets you know that you are in for a little adventure. This book is really fun to read. The characters are great. As I said before, it's got some of everything. It's got friendship, it's got a little romance, it has some nature, science, it touches on climate change issues, and it talks about Jane Austen and writing. 
I enjoyed reading this book so much. I hope you give it a try. That is The Next Great Jane by K.L. Going. Thanks for joining me.